What's up, Team Kesteva? PE example problem number four coming at you. Let's jump in. The concrete column and footing carries the load shown. The footing is six feet wide. You have a column dead load of 80 kips, a column live load of 100 kips. You have moment due to wind of 50 kip feet. Foot kips is how they're saying it. That's fine. Compressive strength of concrete, the 3,000 PSI, and a maximum allowable soil pressure of 3,000 PSI. Question. What is the minimum footing length, L, required for the entire footing to be considered effective in carrying these loads? Okay, so they're looking for, like I said, we always want to see, make sure, what are they asking? They are asking for the minimum footing length, L, required for the entire footing to be considered effective in carrying these loads. What does effective really mean here? So what they're getting at is for foundation design or footing design, we refer to the kern limit, which is basically making sure that the balance of loading remains within the uh, middle third or middle, uh, excuse me, middle sixth of the footing centroid. And the way that we need to check that is we need to find what type of eccentricity this footing is experiencing. And we do that by balancing our axial loads as well as our moments. So eccentricity can be found by applying the equation moment over force because moment is foot kips and then the axial is just kips. So when we divide those, both kips go away and that just gives you feet, which is a distance, which is what eccentricity is. So M over P equals moment, which is 50, over axial, which is going to be combined uh, live and dead load which is 100 kip plus 80 kip. That gets us 0 0.278 feet. Now, that Kern limit, like I said, we want to stay within the middle sixth. So that can be expressed as, so what I'll break down real quick is, is the three states here. So you have complete equilibrium where you have no eccentricity, where your eccentricity is less than or equal to L over six. And that's when you have a footing exerting a force and evenly distributing that force over its the bottom of itself onto the soil, which gives you an even distribution um, of soil pressure. When you have E equaling L over six, so now you're introducing eccentricity. What's happening here is you have eccentricity equal to zero, but above you have eccentricity is greater than zero. And what starts to happen is now your stress that you're exerting onto the soil, and then for statics, the soil bearing pressure exerting a force back to stabilize and remain in equilibrium, starts to skew. So in this condition here, and that will keep on skewing until one edge has experiences zero bearing pressure, whereas the other gets you a max bearing pressure. But when that corner, when that corner edge of a footing gets to zero, that's when E over L equals six. And basically to get from uniform bearing pressure to this case here, a middle step would be this, where E is not zero and E is not equal to L over six. So in the middle, you have E is greater than zero, but is less than L over six. You have this case going on. Everyone following along so far? Okay. Then you have your last case. E is greater than L over six. This is where you get heartburn because now you're outside of that Kern limit. And what's happening is now your footing, what happens is that bearing pressure begins to skew even more, and now you have a max bearing pressure at the one end still, but now you have your zero PSF happening not at the corner of the footing, but it's starting to move inward along the footing, reducing the basically the effectiveness of the, the footing itself, because now what's happening is this portion uh, is effectively in uplift. So there is no force. So under here, 
that part of the footing is actually, if you could imagine, worst case scenario is beginning to lift up. It's beginning to overturn because the force is being applied. So that footing is starting to overturn, dumping all of its force into the other edge, into the far edge of the footing. And that back edge is starting to lift up off of the, the soil below. And that means that in terms of bearing pressure for the soil that the soil experiences, some could say the soil is starting to experience um, tensile stress, but we all know that soil has no tensile capacity. Um, it only has bearing capacity so or compressive capacity. So it's effectively just zero. So that's the states that you have as you move through when you do um, a quick intro to footing design. And for our case, we're going to go back to m over p equals e, which equals 0 0.278 feet. And in order for the entire footing to be considered effective in carrying these loads, we want this state. So we have e. We're trying to find L, so we can plug in the equation E equals L over 6. Well, we have E, so we have 0 0.278 feet equals L over 6. If we bring 6, if we multiply 6 to the other side, that will give us L. So L equals 1.67 feet. For a minimum. And if we look back up, the closest answer is 1.7 feet, which is A. I know I went on a little bit of a tangent today, but I think it's important to realize because in the question that they were asking, they get a little hazy by asking you, well, for the entire footing to be considered effective, what does effective mean? Um, I really think that that meant that I needed to break down and show you what the different stages um, that a footing can go through in terms of how loads are applied to it, and then where we as engineers consider an effective footing design to be. Um, you can, you know, you can design a footing for this case, for this case. You can even design a footing for this case, although we very rarely like to let this happen. Very rarely. We, we try to do whatever we can to either increase the footing size or rework our building or design to get away from that last that last case because effectively we have a portion of footing that isn't really doing anything so that we can make a more slim down effective design so we really try to stick with um, the two states above and mainly try to stay within that middle middle state which is having your eccentricity be less than or equal to l over six all right, I hope you guys found that effective. It was a little more than just a little example problem, but that's it for today. Please like and subscribe as always. Tell your friends, family, everyone you know. Let's keep growing this team together and let's keep solving more problems and get ourselves ready for the PE exam as well as the FE exam. I will be doing more FE problems as well. Don't worry. All right, everybody, until next time, I'll see you.